that's really not helpful for anybody listening to the podcast <laughs> I, like I was without so videos I no it's an in the audio part is the part that I'm thinking about <laughs> I just signed well hello there I learned it today <laughs> it was very good I'm very impressed I'm just thinking of all the people who start the podcast and go is it broken <laughs> is it playing <laughs> sorry it's a quiet place over here <laughs> hi hello <laughs> uh, how, how are you katie you just had your birthday happy birthday again Woo! 24 i am number. i'm 24 i was trying to think of things that were to do with being 24 and i i thought of none of them so it's just it's just a number at this point <laughs> <laughs> it truly really is uh all that matters is how old you feel i've never been somebody who felt like like older or younger than like their actual age mm. like every time i got to a certain birthday i'd be like yeah it makes sense now yeah. maybe like a couple of weeks beforehand i'm like i'm ready to be the next number <laughs> but like i never felt like i was way older than i was or anything or way younger than i was fair. i am just i am just <laughs> you're just okay fair fair <laughs> Do you want to introduce our podcast, like, you know, yeah. ceremoniously and all that stuff? <laughs> I don't have it all signed out, like, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is going <laughs> to be a <laughs> But hi, everyone. Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie, and that is Lily Kay. Hello. It really uh, is her. <laughs> it, it's, it's me, yes. Um, I'm not Troy Baker. I am Troy Faker. I keep forgetting to do that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I would drop it at one point because I just forget. <laughs> um, before we get into a very exciting talk, we have to get into another very exciting talk because Loki is oh. finally uh, on our screens, our small screens, and I want to pick your mind on it a little bit. But just you know, what you think? I think so we should, far. Uh, yeah. I I think we should we should keep it pretty vague, yes. just because I feel like at some point. And by some point, I mean when it finishes. Yes. We'll talk about it properly. 100%. Um, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been, um, I don't have it anymore. I gave it to my brother. Um, I was going to point towards my, I had an Avengers poster on my wall yeah. for a very long time, but then I got rid of a bunch of them because I didn't have the space for them or the poster um, frames. Mm -hmm. So I gave a bunch of them to my brother, but um, I've, been a very big fan of Loki since since Avengers came out uh so this is very gratifying for me <laughs> sitting there going oh they're doing everything I wanted them to <laughs> wonderful uh, nice 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 I like that I like that I freaking love it obviously I was a bit angry with Marvel and the first episode because they made me cry again and I was like <laughs> seriously <laughs> every single time why <laughs> Uh, and then uh, you know, I, I we we just buried that hatchet, and I was like, okay, we can leave, <laughs> but don't make me cry again, please. <laughs> I'm tired of crying on Marvel shows. <laughs> Although I can predict that it can happen, it will happen again, probably. I honestly don't know where this is going, which is nice as well. And I'm trying not to think about it too much either. Yeah, yeah. I did. I have seen some speculations about some certain things, and I'm yes. like, don't look into it. Just no. don't look at it. I'm not looking. I'm just. I'm just enjoying what the fuck's happening now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm still standing, and I mean, it seems to be a really good theory on on my end. Uh, the one I said uh, when we talked about the trailer back, back, back when Disney dropped all the new information. I don't know if you can remember. I do not remember you this. Do not remember uh, that. Uh, there's that was just one shot where Loki sits down on, on Wormer and uh, I think that's Natasha with him. Oh you know, yeah, no I do remember this now, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and with one certain thing in the last episode, episode two, uh, uh, I was like, oh, I might be right on that. Like, you know, that there's something happened there. So I'm like, hmm, interesting. The thing I've seen most is people saying that the, what people have dubbed already as, as as Lady Loki is not actually Lady Loki, oh, yes, but yes, instead yes, yes. Enchantress. Enchantress. And I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. That sounds interesting to me. Yeah. And then I go, and I don't look any further into it because I don't want to go through what we went with one through one division again. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no need for that. Uh, definitely, I I do believe as well that it might be Enchantress and not Lady Loki, but 
they're gonna find out. I was uh, looking at it like, yeah, I guess that makes sense because I feel like it, the, the the fact that she's blonde really threw a lot of people off. Yeah, yep, because Lady might... Lucky isn't blonde. <laughs> that might, yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is I can accept this. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just happy to find out. Yeah. What I liked about it first off, and I said this on Twitter as well, is that I felt like the downside with both One Division and Falcon and Wood Soldier is that they didn't go deep enough. Like they started going deep into certain characters, and then it was like, oh, this is interesting. But in both instances, I would have liked them to take one step further with all of it mm. just to have like 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 perfect like, extra level and loki did that within the first episode where they were like had they had the whole like they, they the whole sort of therapy session for loki yeah. where it was like hey what's up with this and he, he's like gives an answer he's like, no, no no we're staying here until we get an answer to this properly yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i was like this is excellent please keep going <laughs> <laughs> like don't stop it here because this is already interesting yeah. keep digging into this because this is the thing that I'm finding the most fascinating but it's already done it better than I think the other two did it's going well for you huh yeah <laughs> because I was like oh my god I look like a unicorn <laughs> so I just no, to I it. it was cute I liked it <laughs> my unicorn <laughs> yeah now it's even worse I might put up a hat as well I don't know wait 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 we're waiting. She's putting a hat on for the the people at home who are listening. Oh, even better! It's a, it's not just a hat. It's a hat with ears. I was just explaining what was going on to to the people who were not watching the thing and so just listening. And the ears are flapping. There you go. It's perfect for the occasion. <laughs> oh god. Oh dear. Um, but yeah, I I do love it as well. Um, I'm going to point out today is the day where I will point out a few things that are facts about me and I am very proud of these things and one of them is is uh, in connection to Loki actually well to Tom Hiddleston to be fair I, I am I am very proud of this fact I knew Tom Hiddleston before it was cool <laughs> just saying I oh, I I <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I followed his journey uh, way before Thor because that was a uh, British TV show. Uh, ah, Wallander. That's the one. Yes. <laughs> I watched Wallander when I got into Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. I, really... so I learned like the I like I tried to. Okay, I know the like the first little riff of the song. Mm-hmm. I got really obsessed with that song that plays as the opening sequence. Yes. Um, it's a really nice song. It's it called is. Nostalgia by Emily Barker, for those who are curious. Um, it was one of the first pieces on the guitar that I tried to like, because it's like a proper finger picking piece. Mm. Um, and I'm not very good at the guitar. I can play bits and pieces, but I'm not great at it. Yeah. Um, especially because I keep, I always grow my nails out and then I can't play properly. Um, so I just never practice. <laughs> uh, but I, I learned like the, I can I can never figure out how to sing along with it, but I did learn the little melody that she that is played sort of throughout the majority of like the opening of the song. Nice, I like it's that. pretty. It's, it's a good. It's a very nice song. I yeah. was very big fan of it. It's one of those ones I a few I bought on iTunes back in the day. <laughs> That's so cool. That is so cool. I love that series. Uh, I really liked it, and that was uh, one of Tom's first well first ish roles because he did mm. a few things beforehand and that's how i got introduced to him so when the news came that they're gonna make the Thor movie and it was Kenneth Branagh, and i was like oh maybe he's gonna bring in that guy you know you know the the the, the guy with the curly hair <laughs> the, the because blonde, he had a curly hair yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i was like when they announced that uh, he's gonna play loki i was like that's a win that's a win. He was I. He badly. Well, he's not like a main character in that series or anything. No, like that. he's like one of the side characters. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but I I just liked him so much in there. I don't know why. He's just like he's just good. <laughs> I really really enjoyed it, and I was like, oh, he's gonna play Loki. Oh, this is good already. I like. It. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's my story with Tom Hiddleston. I and I was uh, uh that's the other cool fact that uh I was able to share this story with him. Uh, back when the first Avengers movie came out, I made uh-huh. a video. It was very emotional because I wanted to thank him uh, for everything and, you know, uh, be just very 
starstruck and everything. And it got to him because a lot of people on Twitter got together and just kept tagging him. Just kept tagging, tagging, tagging. Like for, it went on for like a month or something like that. Jesus. And then one morning I woke up and it's, it's like a bunch of messages. It was my old Twitter account. It's a bunch of messages from people and they are like, he saw it and he watched it. And, and I still have that tweet. I, I, uh, you know, the, you guys won't see it. Who's, who's just listening to us. But it, it basically says that, uh, that was, um, I think it says that, uh, that was very kind and, uh, wonderful or something like that. And then he, <laughs> something he, very British and polite something, and lovely. Something, yes. Yes. <laughs> and then he goes on that, uh, uh, because I, I also said in the video that I hope to, meet with him one day and work with him one day hopefully uh and he he finished it with uh albert finney once told me to keep be or keep buggering on and i still have it i i i love it i love it and then in 2019 i actually mm -hmm. met with him when i watched betrayal uh mm -hmm. and uh you know i was like you know i was the god did that video for you and he was like oh, that was you <laughs> Do you remember? And he was like, "Yes, I remember. That was so nice." And I, I died. I, I was like, "Yep, no, this is this is the end." He was very kind, very nice, even though he was really tired uh, after the play. But I was like, "I mean, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> my, my, my mom and I went to go see that, um, I, which I've, I've told you before. Yes, uh, we went to see it at the end of of, of May. Yeah, um, uh, and I just remember <laughs> sitting in the audience because we got. I got pretty good seats for us. Yeah, uh, I was very proud of myself. We weren't like we weren't central, so we were kind of looking at everything sort of. But we were quite near the front. Nice, nice. Um, and I just remember like the sort of the you know the stage curtain going up and then just being like, "Yep, then there." Yeah, that's very weird. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it just was like I was looking. It's like it just feels like I'm watching them on a the screen, but like I know they're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when we came out afterwards one was like do you want to go and like wait up but there was originally this massive crowd of people yep. and I was like I'm good I'm not gonna lie it's one of those things it's like I just feel like it's gonna be a long time to get to that point yeah and it's gonna end up being me trying to figure out how to say something nice because it's like a cute, like you know I've been a fan of him and Charlie Cox for you yeah. know yeah. so many years now I was just sort of like I just can't <laughs> <laughs> it would be better for me to just appreciate this from afar yeah i don't yeah. need them to know any it's like they they get enough of this so they, they, it's fine we yeah. don't need to do i don't need to do this i i know that i appreciated it yeah yeah it's you know you, we are opposites on <laughs> in this i'm like i was because you know the whole story i don't know if i ever told you the podcast but i watched it play twice because the first time mm. there was a fire in the building next yeah. door and i was like nah <laughs> So literally they came play. out and they were like, well, the you know, the security guards came out and they were like, yeah, there's not going to be any signing today, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. You know, it was right at the, where the stage door was and everything. I was so fucking disappointed. I was like, I cannot believe this. Uh, I obviously spent a lot of money on the ticket as well. Uh, and we just stuck around with a few people like I, that's where I met one of my now friends uh, as well. And who I went back with uh, in the end, Judy. And um and that's when Charlie Cox came out and he was like, oh, my God, so sorry, guys. I, I know you waited for this, but, you know, I'm here. And he was so nice, the nicest person. And I managed to tell him that I am so devastated that Daredevil is over. <laughs> I was like, it was right around that time when they were like, yeah, no more Daredevil. And he was like, oh, thank you. I really like that show, blah, blah, blah. And he and then that was the first time I met him. <laughs> the next time we met, I met him two more times. And I was like, look, this is the third time. This means something. And he was like, yeah, I might have to marry you. And I was like, OK, <laughs> fine. He's married. He's already married. He has kids. <laughs> Look, I, I don't... <laughs> he was really nice. But all of them were like... You, you could see that they were really tired. Like, you know, they've been doing mm. their play for over and over again. They were really nice. And, and you know, I left because I did a drawing of, of Tom. And I uh, gave it to the security guard on, on the day when it first didn't happen. The whole meetup mm. thing. And, and he got that one as well. And he was like, oh, my God, you're such a great artist as well. And I was like, please stop it. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Don't do this. You're already too nice. <laughs> Don't make me cry as well, please. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was nice. I liked it. Uh, but yes, uh, I will brag about one more thing when we get to our next weekend. Then I am done bragging. <laughs> yeah. 
I I just find that now, like when in my in my youth, I, I had um, in my youth as if I'm old. I mean, in my teenage years, you know, yes. when I got really into sort of, I, I would have been way more interested in doing that sort of thing. But mm. now I just feel like it's such a brief meeting. Mm. It's not enough. It, it, I just know I wouldn't be my best self within it. Gotcha. And it would not be a good enough representation of who I am as a person. And it's like it's that thing of like. I would if if I were to meet somebody that I admired that much I wanted to be in a setting where I can actually present at least some form of my best self yeah. instead of just sort of like a hi <laughs> I like you a lot okay bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah yeah to be fair they were like you know there were security guards who were moving the crowd along and everything because there were yeah. a lot of people but they were really nice like you know they didn't rush you uh if you had something to say to them and and you know they were they were pretty chill as well. Like you know they went around. They did. You could choose that. It's either the signing something or or the photo. But they were really nice about that one as well. So I liked it. They they were pretty cool. Pretty cool people. Yeah. Very, very good. Very I think good. It, I also have to be in like exactly the right sort of mindset. This is my 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 absolute neurodivergency coming out here. Where I'm like, if I'm doing something, I have to go into it knowing exactly. I can't just be thrust into a situation mm. like where you just sort of stumble on somebody or, or, or like that. I would just be like, I would just wouldn't engage. Like if I saw somebody in the street, I'd be like, I've noticed them. I'm not going near them because <laughs> it's like I don't want to bother. It would be just horribly awkward for me and for them. It wouldn't go well. It's just gonna be like. <laughs> yep, yep. But it means that if I go to a convention, I'm like, I'm going there with the express person to talk to X, Y, or Z person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's that kind of thing. It's like I know I'm setting myself up for this thing, mm. and therefore I know I know exactly what I'm going to get out of it. It's that kind of thing. I need to know in advance. <laughs> Can't just sort of, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I I completely get it, and you know, obviously, it's weird. Like I remember that when the, the first time around, when it was only Charlie. Uh, he was coming around the corner so he wasn't even coming out from the stage door so, so he was already out somewhere and he was just coming back and he stepped back in and he was literally stepping back in next to me and I literally went like Charlie <laughs> that's all I can say I was like Jesus Christ you couldn't believe it I was like oh my god yeah the only time I, I kind of got to that sort of thing is I went to a book signing mm. um, with my mother funnily enough um, when I was f- just turned 14 um this was before I got into Sherlock. This is like a very strange sort of period just before yes. I got into, into, into Sherlock. I think it was like July. Then I got into Sherlock like the next month. It was a whole thing because I went on. It was I, in my head. It's it, they're so different in mm-hmm. like, terms of like time. Um, and I went to it was the author I was just telling you about before we um, started recording. Yes, Her name was yes. Maureen Johnson. She had a book that came out and she was on book tour. My mum and I went to Chelsea to go to her book signing. She was doing a little speech and everything. Nice. And there, just sort of, she, he happened to be there was um, Charlie McDonald. Charlie is so cool. Like, And I may have sort of like, not entirely comfortably chased after him <laughs> as he was leaving the like, building. Because I was like, there were other people going. And um, I was like, I was kind of like, I don't really know if I should do this. And then, and then other people were going, I was like, okay. And then mom kind of was like, mm, no, if you want. We sort of moved afterwards and they got, uh, got a very nice picture with them. Um, it's very strange for me to look at it now because like, it was before I had my braces. So I had to have mm-hmm. my, um, I had vampire teeth. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> and my hair was so long. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I look like a baby. <laughs> Such a child, and but it was like it was one of the first sort of things I could I could actually be like I, it was totally random. I wasn't intending to meet him this day, nice. and he was so lovely about it. Yeah, I still yeah. love Charlie's one of those those good dudes. I, I every so often I see pop up on my Twitter and I see him doing well. I'm like, yeah, good for you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm glad for you. You know, I I I do believe that you know if you're if you're normal to them and respectful to them, then I don't they usually don't have a problem with you going up to them and having oh yeah I, I just i just know i feel i'm not a i'm not a small talk sort of person and it's like that kind of thing of when you you when you are entering into a sort of conversation like that mm. when where they have a certain amount it's that parasocial thing yeah really where you're going in and this person means so much to you Mm -hmm. and they have absolutely no idea who you are yeah there's just an inherent power thing that's like going on and i was just like i can't 
deal with going into that sort of thing anymore <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. No, where I'm just sort of like nah <laughs> like, when we do it like this it's much nicer because I'm like I'm gonna have an actual conversation so we can see each other as like human beings on, a, on, an, on an equal level <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's nicer to yeah. me but if I'm going in on like a like a, a purely sort of like fan level mm. I feel a bit sort of like oh you're not I'm, I just I feel like I'm diminishing myself somehow just by entering <laughs> into this moment in a sort of very like hi <laughs> i like you a lot <laughs> i you know i i uh, i i think it was uh my time at the event management and organizing mm. stuff where i just got so used to it that i can control it really well and then i obviously did a few movies as an extra where there were big names there and you had to be normal around them obviously so i was like i, I i'm like it has to be someone very very special for me to be like huh <laughs> <laughs> so i'm very proud of that that i i can handle it so well because otherwise i would just go crazy on everyone which is not nice i'm not don't do that guys it's not nice uh, be normal yeah. to them. They, they appreciate that a lot more than being like oh my god yeah but seriously just they're people <laughs> yes. just talk yeah them they, they are actually like you know some of them are actually very nice when it comes to this stuff like uh, they're, yeah they're know. going into it knowing exactly what they're sort of getting in for yeah. really I think most of the time because they I guess used to it is is the, the best term but I guess it's more just sort of like it happens a lot that, so that they're like oh this is just the thing that I've learned how to deal with that sort of thing yeah um I will say I got when I went to back in oh fuck when was it now 2018 latter part of 2018 mm-hmm. or was it 2017 i can't remember the first time the critical role cast came to england for mcm yes it was a huge deal because like they hadn't gone abroad like all of them for a convention properly before uh especially not to the uk which is there's a, there's a lot of people here who like the show yeah, yeah. um and i went i i didn't because they the autographs and the the pictures went so quickly yeah and i didn't have enough money to get everybody i i but i made the effort to i was like i'm going to get either an autograph or a picture with liam because liam is one of those like he he was my uh he's played both my favorite characters in both campaigns now <laughs> and i just he's one of my like favorite actors to, yeah. of all time like i i love watching him work it's incredible for me mm. uh and um uh, we went through this the other day because I showed you all of my, my funky yes. uh, critical role art books uh, but just Vax in the first campaign made so much to me mm. um, especially during the period where he was playing him um, I, and I didn't get an autograph but I got a picture and I was like a picture's not going to take very it's going to it's literally going to be a couple of seconds um, and I was like I was kind of stressing out about it because I was like I want to be normal and I want it to be like a nice like thing I ended up he was t- tweeted the day beforehand how excited he was to kind of go and I was like hey I'm kind of nervous about meeting you <laughs> and he just he replied and was like I'm just a theater nerd it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it was a very sweet moment and I wasn't sure about like I was like I don't know like because it, again it's also that thing of like do you, you hug them because some people are like I know some people are weird about personal space and it's like it really is just a matter of like the person to person and I remember going waiting in line and I met a nice guy in the line that we ended up talking for a while he was dressed as Vax yeah. named Reese. he's become a good friend of mine um uh, incredible cosplayer um uh, and we were kind of waiting in line and I was just kind of talking about how excited I was and all this sort of stuff and the person in front hugged him and I was like okay so he's good on hugs yeah <laughs> <laughs> and in my head I'm like afterwards I was like Jesus Christ because I, I went up and he stuck out his hand and I went in for a hug and then he was like oh okay and then he hugged yeah. me and I was like oh shit oh fuck <laughs> I should have done fuck <laughs> like, why do I have to be so freaking awkward <laughs> But it ended up being, I think, the nicest picture I've ever gotten at a Comic Con because I just so bad when people point cameras at me. I don't know how what to do with my face. I yeah. feel like Chandler um, trying <laughs> to smile and all of it. I'm like, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> so I'm like, don't do teeth. Just don't smile with your teeth. Yes, yes, Fine. that's a lesson for me as well. <laughs> try not to do it um and afterwards he because i was kind of half dressed as it was like a sort of vague nathan drake sort of yes, thing yes, i was going yes. for and he turned to me and started asking me about it and he was like so you're nathan drinking up today i was like because i wasn't expecting to talk to him at all 
<laughs> and I was like, yeah, I am. And then I, I like literally just before I left, I was like, before I go, I just want to thank you very much for Axel. And he means the world to me. And he was like, that's very kind. He means everything to me as well. And then I left and I was like, that's all I needed. It's good. I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, that is so um, nice. Uh, that picture is is still one of my favorites. Uh, and I was meant to meet them again in May of 2020. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I had a whole plan. I have a picture. No, um, sorry. I have a shirt um, from Polygon video mm-hmm. that Brian David Gilbert did about E3, um, which is very silly sort of graphic tee. Yeah. Uh, he did like, and he put a jacket on <laughs> and it said something very rude on the front when you put the jacket on, it covers up most of the words. But I was like, I'm going to use that. I'm going to put a jacket on. I'm going to go full business game of fashion. I'm going to get a picture with all of them. And that was my plan. Nice. (laughs) And it's been scattered. But as soon as they come back, I'm going to make it a thing. 100%. I I have people on my list that I I need to see as well. So, you know. And uh, I want to. The big big ones last year was, uh, well, not less. Was it last year? Jesus Christ, it was last year. God damn it. It was Nick Frost who was coming to uh, the film and Comic Con and I was like, oh, oh my god, it's Nick Frost. I, I already met Simon, so I have to meet Nick. Uh, but obviously, I didn't. No one did. So My picture with Simon is so disappointing because I got caught halfway between smiling like without my teeth and with my teeth. And I also had a massive like scab from my cold sore that I had gotten oh, like two days yeah. beforehand. So I was like, I look terrible. But, like, this is a nice <laughs> moment. <laughs> Oh my god! Don't don't even get like it's right next to me because I can't I can't you know my my sister says that it's cute, but I I think it's just horrible. It's my Jason Momoa story, which I I think I already told you that he was like I gave him a drawing well to his manager. The manager showed it up. He was like, oh, you drew that, and I was like, yeah. And he was like, let's do something silly, and I was like, okay, let's do something silly, and I went full in, and he's just standing next to me and being all normal, and I look like a fucking idiot, like. <laughs> God damn it, Jason! Why did you do this to me? No, because he's got something. Like it's, I think it's just his eyebrows. Or he's like, it's just yes, yeah. And it's it, it it literally looks like that he's my dad and I'm his idiot daughter. He's like, oh my god! And I was like, oh, can't believe this. But also, it was it was the only birth pic- like like bad picture i took at london film and comic con that was my first time as well every mm. every single one like all the others are good like the lenny james one the bam one the lana Par- oh my god I, lana party is gorgeous in real life i'm just gonna put that out there like jesus christ uh and you know i had a good conversation with them and all but i don't know what usually happens to me at the mcm comic cons but i just i think i'm just so excited that i have this thing and uh, it was my brother who kept pointing out to me, and now it bothers me. But if I really smile, my gums are out, mm. and and he calls it the alien smile. And it, you know, I love alien, but like, please don't call me oh, that. It's, it's, no, it's very hurtful. I know you're watching and listening, so please stop it because it, <laughs> it it's a serious confidence issue now. <laughs> so I literally, I like during the one of my comic cut, I was like, I was forcing myself not to smile like that. Like I was like. Is it good? And then when I got the pictures, I was like, oh, it doesn't show it's good. But <laughs> I went to MCM and all my pictures, except for the one with Troy, all my pictures, I literally like, because I'm just so excited and I, I couldn't control it or I didn't pay enough attention. Yeah. And, and, you know, Simon even went because he was the only one who recognized me. I was dressed as Ripley and he was yeah. the only one who recognized it. And he was like, oh my God, Ripley. And I was like, ah, you're so cool. <laughs> and the picture is like, Hi. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. Uh... I'm personally of the opinion uh that, that this is I think this is the best rule to kind of go by. That if you're gonna point something out about somebody's appearance and it can't be fixed within five seconds, you don't say anything. Yes. So it's like if somebody's got dirt on their nose, sure, tell them. Yeah. Or like something between their teeth. Something that they can fix. Mm. You're gonna point, go to them, and say, "Hey, you, you have a weird thing that happens when you do this thing with your face. That's just don't do that." <laughs> it's, it's either they're already aware of it, and you're pointing out something they're already sort of like anxious about, or you've pointed out something new that they never knew that they did, and they're gonna be conscious of it the entire rest of their lives. And yep. it's not, ha- it's not helpful or nice. Nope, nope, nope. And he just keeps bringing it up, and I'm like, I, I literally have to force myself on photos, be like, 
Mm. Ah, right. the white person smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Thanks, bro. Very nice. Uh, but anyway, let's Should we get, get into the actual meat. Yes, yes. Uh, well, we, 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 you know, we always talk like half hour about things that are like just tangents. So we're good. We're, we're right there. <laughs> bon. I finally saw the quiet face. You finally saw it. <laughs> I mean, the, the part two, because part two. obviously I love yes. the first one. Uh, but before we get into part two, you can now tell your opinion about part one. I did, I think I did already. Did you do it a couple already? like you know, after we went to see it, you were like, "Well, you've seen part one, and I've seen part one, so we could talk about it." Um, talk but about I can this? go through it again oh, um, and say that I really I loved it because I, t- I remember I told you that I cried very yes. very hard through it. Yep. <laughs> um, the ending it was kind of those sort of like um, sort of surprised how easily I cried at it. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think I, like I said, I um, I had, I had known what was going to happen in it, but I was still like, geez, this is a lot. Yes. <laughs> Very emotional. And then I also complained about the fact that there were a couple of moments of like horror movie characters being a bit dumb. That I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, like it was not in nothing obviously that actually diminished the quality of the film because the yeah. film is so very good yeah. um and the story of it is wonderful and it's it's incredibly tense and obviously the sound is incredible but it's just the things like her going up the stairs with those two massive bags and laundry and she's pregnant and i'm like she clearly is stuck on something and instead of you know going backwards and quite carefully unhooking it from whatever the hell the bag is stuck on. She just pulls really hard, which could have resulted in a very loud tearing bag. <laughs> and does result in a large nail, which yeah. comes back to bike her later. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> and I just kind of was like, going, why? Why? Yeah. But I think maybe maybe it's just sort of like you can't have a movie like this without at some point going, Why? Why would you do that? It's yes, it's 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 hard, especially in a horror movie, but also it points out a very well, it's not a nice fact about people, but people sometimes are people are kinda dumb. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in a way it fits. (laughs) In a very weird way, it's like, yeah. We all do things like this. Let's be honest. Like you know, yeah. It was it was that moment, and also when he leaves her in the basement after she gives birth, and he goes up and he doesn't hear the loud rushing sound of water. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. <laughs> Which like laps towards him as he goes out of shot. I'm like, dude, come on, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but I digress. It's like it's it's the small things, but I I really I loved the movie and I thought it was it was beautiful and I was um I uh, was very impressed with it. Um, I yeah, I you know what what were your thoughts on the second one? Let's go into that. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> I love it. Like I love it even more than I love the first one. Ah. Which is, interesting which is a very high praise because mm. i you know second movies are usually not that great uh when it comes to sequels but uh sequels but um this one is it it had everything that i missed from the first movie let's start with that interesting i loved the opening mm. that opening was so freaking tense obviously spoilers like let's just oh yes let's put do that now here. we are going to spoil the shit out yeah. of a quiet place part two which yes. you should go and see in the cinema if oh, you can 100 percent, because uh, it is definitely built for that oh, yes yes uh it was it was my uh way back to the cinema it was it was the first movie i watched in the cinema uh since this whole stupid pandemic started and it was perfect uh but uh the during the whole time when they were uh, playing baseball, I was like, "Something's gonna, it, it, it's, it's gonna come now. It's, it's gonna take the kid. It's gonna, da, 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 da. which is, you know, it doesn't make sense because it's their mm-hmm. kid, so obviously they <laughs> can't take it. And then when they showed, what I assume is the spaceship, uh, but it's not very clear. It could be just an asteroid. Or something. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was like. Uh, I think I think it's intentionally vague. Yeah. Um, uh, I, 
in my head it was like an asteroid that they sort of were in probably yeah yeah but I mean, you know who knows what something... who knows whatever it doesn't really matter to be fair i no. don't really care about something it. crashed through the atmosphere and brought with it some very large creatures that have spectacular sense of hearing yes 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 exactly and uh and then i it's it's very rare for me to do these at horror movies especially because i've watched so many of them and jump scares are like no longer work on me but not in this case when <laughs> it jumped to the police car i was like fuck <laughs> And it was so freaking intense, especially because John Kaczynski did this very smart thing where he immediately switched back to to the daughter and all the son just died and you could just see like people running around and probably screaming, but you you don't hear anything and it's like oh, this is so good. Um and and that that whole sequence at the beginning is phenomenal. Like it's very very I, good, very very good. I like how he figures out that it's probably sound, and he stops the guy from saying the prayer, and and you know I was like, oh okay. yeah, we're thinking here, good good. I like that. I got a heart attack when they crashed uh, the mom and the other two children. I was like, oh Jesus Christ, uh, and it was it was so intense. I know that they're not gonna have any harm, obviously, because we already saw them in mm. in part one. But I was like, I still it was like, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, beautifully done very mm. intense scene i love 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 that opening um and i will i will also say something that i never thought i would i would say that uh it's it's finally on the same level as as you know like i i've been waiting for a monster movie like this since alien and now i have it yeah you know i think i i think i'm i'm with you there on that actually i think i think you're right it's that they've they've they've, they've managed to come up with a very interesting mm monster villain that it, um, is genuinely so i um for the part like you know this uh but for the people at home i've been doing some script reading for the past couple of weeks which uh, for some work experience which has been very fun for me um and one of the movies that i got to read was a monster film mm. i won't go into details about it because i don't really actually know how much i'm allowed to talk about it but yeah i will say that the thing there was a, the trouble that i had with it was that the monster that this person created didn't have any sort of like law or rules attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this movie does incredibly well is that it's like, or both of these movies, in fact, is that yeah. they're like, here is the monster. Here are all of its, like the reasons why it's scary. Basically, yeah. here's how it works. It works on sound. You can't say anything like too loudly. Otherwise it will find you and tear you apart. Yeah. Um, it's an alien. Um, we don't, there's like reasons behind why it's still around and why we've had to adapt to like the unit, the world with it in it, as opposed to have just a bit having eradicated it. Like yeah. it's a huge plot point of the first movie is him trying to figure out what the weakness of it is. Although I do find it interesting that it took them that long <laughs> to figure out that the thing that can hear sounds really loudly is sensitive to certain frequencies. I think <laughs> on, uh, on, on that case, I think it happened so fast that too quickly that they the that, smart people yeah. probably couldn't have yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think made, that's they become the too disparate yeah. yeah i get the i think the, there are little things in it that i'm like okay i can buy this but you're pushing your luck just a tidbit for me yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like in in it's one of those things that is it's i'm, I'm out of focus so i just yeah like, come you, on you just went out of focus there we go okay. um it's one of those things where it's like this is an interesting enough premise that even the things that are stretching it a bit, I'm like, it's fine. I'll just, yeah. I'll just buy it. I'll yeah. just, I, I will actively choose to let go of this as, as a thing that I might, might be, um, uh, could you know, convoluted or or, or like stretching the stretching my the limits of my um reasoning here. I will say that there is something that happens in the first movie that becomes quite important in the second one. I wanted to hear your thoughts on this because I watched them back to back. If you remember. Yeah. There's a moment in the first movie after she's what she just woke up from you know her post post baby nap. Yes, uh, and she realizes the whole basement area is completely flooded, and the monster comes through, and it gets in the water. Yes. In the second movie, they can't swim because that water in the basement is not deep enough. Yeah. See, this is where I was like, I did, I felt like it maybe it wasn't entirely. Because I was sitting there going, 
I don't think that's a plot hole. I, I still it's not a plot up. hole. It's just it's a it's a I, I think it it can be explained away, but I don't know if it was explained well enough. Well, for, like yeah, because I was sitting there going, hmm. Like it shouldn't be something that I should be sitting there going, hmm. I I, <laughs> I don't know how well that works. I I I think it works uh, very well because if you look at the two scenes uh, back to back, uh, in the first one. The basement motor is like up to her waist, basically. And yeah, but when it's the, just, when the it was the fact that it, it went the whole way underneath and it was there and, for a long time. And it crawls too. Yeah, but and it was, it was under the water one, for it, a very long time. Yeah. And it seemed like in the second one, they were way more afraid of it. Um, and I was like, like, it does make sense. I, I, it really, it does technically make sense, but it did stop me for a second where I was like, hmm. Like, I had to sit there and just decide whether or not I believed it enough. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't have any problem with it, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, you know, it was like, it, he, uh, the monster fell in very quickly in the second one. And it was obviously too deep. I think that mm -hmm. was the main problem that uh, I think in the first one, especially because he, he moves so swiftly that, uh, you know, you can't even predict where it's gonna show up. I think it was crawling through. Uh, yeah. on, on the floor and that's why you could stay down so I don't think it was like a question of it couldn't breathe on the water mm. or, or anything like that it's just it couldn't swim and it wasn't swimming in the first one it was literally just like you know crawling yeah it, I just it, 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 it you know scratched at me a little bit I was like I don't know how much I, I, I'm, I'm on board with this but I think it I think it works it's one of those little bits and pieces um i will say i think the first one's better i loved the second one i thought it was very good but i think the second one also suffers from a thing that i just find with stories in general where i like very small stories uh and by that i mean the first one is just about them yeah and it's just about them trying to survive and it's just about their farm and it's like it's very sort of localized, and the second one, which happens a lot with these sorts of things, they obviously they they feel they have to kind of ramp up the tension a little bit, and they end up making the stakes that like step bigger, where they're like, we're going to actively try and save the world a bit here, and I kind of it just it, maybe it, it's probably just a fault of mine where I just sort of go. <laughs> I find it far less interesting because I'm like, I don't care about the stakes of the world. I care about the stakes of these people. And when it was about these people, I found it way more, you know, the, the moments where it was like actively more about like their peril. I was like, yeah, I'm into this. But the more it was kind of like they had the whole thing of her like leaving the bunker and being like, I'm going to go off and save stuff. And I was like, a bit, I don't know. It was good. It, like none of this is actually a, a detriment to the film which genuinely is excellent. It was just sort of, I cared like a smidge less about sort of the fate of everybody else. Well, I, I don't think that, like, was, eh. that was the main thing in it. Like, you know, she did it because of Lee, because of her father, because, you know, he, during the first one, he kept trying to figure out what mm -hmm. to do on, or, or how to make it safer for themselves as well and i think that was they they just lost lee like you know the yeah. second one played yeah. like a day after lee died so i was like okay uh they are obviously still mourning and and uh i think for her it was more of a i will do this for dad because it would be something that dad wants <laughs> all of it makes sense it's just it is genuinely just a personal sort of like gut sort of feeling or like a, a personal enjoyment thing mm -hmm. In that it's it's the same issue that I have between Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows, right? Because yeah. Shadow and Bone's this sort of like the characters are great and everything, but it's this very lofty story about like the fate of the world. They're trying to do something that's going to help everybody, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> kind of. I'm a bit sort of like, I just it doesn't it doesn't grab me or like interest me as much as like Six of Crows, where the main sort of like like personal drive for all the characters it's like we want to get fucking paid <laughs> yeah like it really is it doesn't it's not uh, it's not about like trying to save everybody it's not about like a like a grand purpose beyond all this sort of stuff and i and i go that's way more i just threw my other headphone off um that's way more interesting to me and i find that more enjoyable <laughs> than 
this sort of wider universe. Like, even if it does make sense for the characters, even if it makes sense that obviously she wants to do something bigger than herself because that's what her dad was trying to do. Yeah. Like, it all makes sense and it all works very well. It's just personally, I'm, I just, I find myself caring less, mm-hmm. which <laughs> just mm-hmm. is all that. But yeah. again, it's still excellent. It is. It is. It, I, 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 I think I loved it more, not because, you know, I loved the first one a lot. <laughs> I've seen it so many times. Uh, I love their story. I, you know, I love that it was just them. But mm. I think what uh, Krasinski did here was very smart because it's, you know, it's not opening up to the whole world, but obviously you get more of a glimpse into what's going on with others. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciated the fact that, you know, they um, introduce uh, these. I think like they look like drug addicts, uh, the the guys that attack them at, uh, at yeah. the boat. And I was like, that's all I needed from them. Like, I, I think their scene was more than enough in there. Like, yeah, you know, uh, because stories like this tend to go to man is worse than the monster. That way. see, I was going to say that was the one thing when they when he was like, the, you know, it's worse out there. And he started kind of going into it a little bit in the dialogue. I was like, I kind of held my breath a bit like, oh, don't do this. I don't I don't yeah. want to I don't want to do this. This is not interesting. We've done this before. Yeah. And I, I love that. You know, it was like, yeah, they can be pretty bad. And obviously there will be people who go uh, when something like this happens. But uh, I love that, like, almost immediately the monsters came and it was like over for them. Done. You're not worse. You can't be worse than this. So well, it's like them, you're worse in a different way, but there's still this incredibly powerful yeah. like force that is yeah. out there. Yeah. So I was like, okay. That was good. I I really like that. Uh, I love the I love the island. I I I think it, we spent just enough time there, and also, mm. oh Jesus Christ! I was like, oh, okay. I this is my bragging point. We we arrived here. Okay. <laughs> uh, is it still so, this guy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have four people in my life that I can say that I followed their work from the very very beginning. One of them was Tom Hiddleston. Angelina Jolie, Chris Evans, and the other guy is Cillian Murphy. And I have many more movies from him, but I have his very old movies as well. Uh, mm. th- this one in front is one of my favorite, Breakfast in Pluto. Uh, he's brilliant. He's freaking brilliant in it. Uh, but my introduction, and I, it still hurts, so I have to find it somehow. I still don't have 28 Days Later, which was my introduction to him. Uh, and uh, I, I don't have it. I don't have it, and it, it kills me inside. But uh, that that's my burning point. That uh, I watched that movie, and I went back, and I watched everything from him. I have everything from him. I have way more than you this right there. But I was like, okay, we, I, we should just start recording, so I kick you on here. And I am so happy to see that he is finally getting roles that are for him and and he deserves them so well and i you know christopher nolan is obviously one of the people who picked him up and was like yeah you're great you're coming into my movies and you know he was in in batman he was in dunkirk he was in inception he you know he's he's he's, he's always there and i love it i love Killian so much um and you know with picky blinders and everything but i think like Movies like this, like A Quiet Place Part 2 and 28 Days Later, are just so good for him. He's mm. so brilliant. <laughs> like, I am, ah! I marvel at how much of a chameleon he is. Oh. He is one of those actors where, like, I will watch him and I'm like, oh, fuck, right, that's Kenny <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> like, I know on, like, a like an intellectual level, but, like, I was watching him throughout this movie and I just stopped, like... It's him him and Ben Wishaw is another one for me where I watch him and stuff and I forget yeah. who I'm watching. Yeah. I'm like, oh fuck, it's like him, like Tom Hardy is another one. They're yeah. all in that kind of ilk where I'm just sort of like, oh, right, yeah, yeah I know exactly yeah. who you are. I'm yeah. not seeing you behind it. I'm seeing the character that you're putting forward. And I really, I really like them in, in, in oh. this movie. Like I really, I was, because I'm such a sucker for like grizzled old, um dad types who yeah. like adopt new daughters within yeah. that yeah. like sort of narratives i'm like yeah yes <laughs> like i'm such a fan of it i know some people get out are like so bored of like the the video game dad sort of type of thing i'm like nah, nah. every time i'm always into it i yeah. wrote my own movie has its own <laughs> grow up like, like nihilistic dad type that i wrote because i was like 
I just love it. I just I have to do this. It's I so need good. this. It's my favorite. And it's all right. It's it's brilliant. And uh, oh. I I think his character here is was oh, it's like if you dare to kill him. I'm seriously going to I be was so pissed off. terrified at the uh, end. I was like, don't kill another one of her dad figures. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I just not. No, just don't no. do it. No, I'm not having this. Actually, speaking of the end, though, yeah. I want to go back and actually talk about the whole sequence leading up to it. Yes. It ends incredibly abruptly, right? Yes. Because I was sat there and went, that's it? I could have done with at least more five more minutes. Like five more minutes. That would have been like, or even two more minutes, really, just to kind of resolve where everybody was going to go from there. Because I was like, what do you mean it's done? <laughs> but like, that's what they did with the first one as well. So but the first one, you got the sense of what was going to happen next. Because you, you got the, because they had the whole sequence of them, like, they, they killed the first one. Yes. And then you started seeing the other ones coming towards the house and she cocks the shotgun. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like, okay, they're yeah. going to go ahead and fight some more. Yeah. This one, they successfully get rid of the one like they they her and her brother managed to do this sort of like really heroic and it's like oh my god they're both just like their dad yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. moment um where they where they you know kill the monsters in their own way yeah and then and then it just ends and i'm like there's no there's no sort of indication like obviously i think you can just assume that like they're gonna get some kind of message out to you know her mom and and her brother and her other brother it was a boy, the baby, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, think I couldn't remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was like, it's just the baby. I've forgotten. <laughs> um, a very big baby for a, like a day old child. <laughs> Let's not go into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, the kids themselves, they, they yeah, they grew yeah, up. It's like, like, it's, it's at the same point, you just like, it's fine. You can. You, you can. <laughs> just go with it. It's yeah, fine. You just have um, to go with it. Um, yeah, it was like because like you, they they end in like such separate places with no real indication of what is gonna happen to the both of them next. I was like, I would have like just like a couple more second, like like a couple more minutes, like showing I don't know them deciding that they're gonna they're like okay, we have this tool now. Now we're gonna head to her. Yeah, like that kind of thing. Yeah, I was I was a bit weird that you know uh, it it wasn't what or, or it didn't seem like it's on their mind to go back to her mom right and brother i was like mm, okay that's like that was the only thing like 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 a minute or like two yeah. minutes more i would have liked maybe on the end just to give a sense of like yeah here's the direction that they're going to be going in next i don't need to see them take that journey yeah, i just yeah, like yeah. the knowledge that like this is sort of the plan yeah and then you could have kind of ended it and it was like so when it sort of ended like, like that abruptly i was like oh we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it, that was yeah. I agree. I agree. That was a bit weird, but uh, yeah. I I think you know obviously now. Well, in the in the first one, they already figured out that this this might be the key to destroy them. Mm. Uh, it would be interesting to see because now we have confirmation that a quiet place part three is happening. Is it a part three or is it? Because I thought it was a set. It was a separate sort of story, I, I think but it was set in three. the same world. Because it's a different director. I know, yeah, yeah. John I, I thought that, it was yeah. like a like a sort of I don't side quest isn't really the right word, but like sort of side there's like a separate storyline. Um that's no. like not because I feel like I read this in, in in um Empire or something very recently. I'm gonna look this up now because I'm curious. Look it up, but if that's the case, I'm not happy. I I can only <laughs> tell that because I, I need this first of all, I need the family. Because I don't, because I like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a part three. I think it's different. I think it's the same universe, different story. Oh yeah, don't do that, please. <laughs> I don't like Which that. no, to be honest, I would be interested in. I wouldn't. <laughs> um, as long as like, ma like I don't even know if I need. I, it's the whole thing. I'm like, I, I I'm going back and forth because I'm like, like I said, with. With this one, with the the way that they've expanded the world a bit, I'd worry that they go into the third a third movie, expanding it to the point where I start going, okay, <laughs> and I don't want them to do that. You know, it's like it's that thing of like, oh, are they going to step one step even further? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I want them to like. I don't want them to expand the world so much. I don't like, I don't... or they expand like the what these characters care about so much. That it starts being about everything else apart from just them. Hmm. That makes any sense. I, 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 
I am not af- in this case. I'm not afraid of this happening uh, because I think Adrian did it smart. Uh, you know, uh, moving the xenomorph from one place to another, uh, and and it was never too much. And I also I am very biased with Adrian because I love it. Uh, but uh, I think if 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 they do it smart, this can still mm-hmm. be something that works very well like i i feel like that um they could fall into the trap of of like this false feeling of being safe now that yeah. they, they have this uh like i'm not gonna lie jesus christ that scene mur- like i screamed out when he stepped into the beer trap i was like Aah! oh yeah no it was really <laughs> like i like actually like i didn't say anything because we're british and we don't in the cinema you know yeah, yeah, yeah. um but i because I, I was in i was in the lounge at my local cinema yeah. uh, and i i had made the effort this time because uh, when i went the the few days beforehand to see nomadland i hadn't put the, the seat back far enough <laughs> so i spent the entire movie kind of half up yeah. and i was like this isn't comfortable so when i went to see quiet when i went to see quiet place one and two i set it back as far back as i could yeah yeah and was like so i was like i was basically lying down just like yeah. <laughs> like so sort of like tense all over the place um i will just cut in real quick yes to say i was right in november of 2020 paramount pictures hired jeff nichols to write and direct a spin-off of the original di- idea from john krasinski who will produce the film is set to be released on march 31st 2023 but in may 2021 emily blunt it- revealed that krasinski also has an idea for a potential third main installment oh there you go that's the one so I there's there's like talks about doing a, like an actual third one Please but the one that like has been officially announced is a spin-off yeah. <laughs> but like you also have to remember john krasinski is still involved with the spin-off so whatever yeah. it is same world different characters that is interests me in, in, in enough ways it work. where it can be it, like yeah. as long what i like most about what this series is doing is that it's it it manages to ride the line between being incredibly tense and like scary and it's still an apocalypse without losing the hope mm-hmm. like there is hope still like like sort of embedded within all of it yeah um, which is nice because it doesn't feel completely like desolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and I, uh, my hope, my worry with a third one would be that it would either go so far into like everything's going to be okay that it stops being scary, or if it it goes so far into like trying to retro sort of sort of course correct that sort of thing that it becomes depressing, right? Yeah, like, like, yeah. I, I did it. it I think if anybody's going to be able to do a good job of it, it'll be John Krasinski because oh, yeah, he's already yeah. proved, like, yeah, with 100%. these two, that he's like, he's got a good ear for this sort of yeah. thing. He, he seems Very to know good. what he's doing. Very good. Um, oh no! Oh no! Sorry, what? What? I let I let back in, in the uh, oh. got a uh, glare on my uh, thing. Um, yeah, yeah, but Can... I, I th- that's why I, I brought up the beer trap part because yeah, I I think. The way you know, obviously, he's gonna start screaming. Yeah, that is fucking the fucking bear trap. Uh, oh, jeez, and and he he did such a good job. I was, I was feeling her, his pain. I was like, oh, oh Jesus. Uh, but uh, that's when the first maybe we are a bit, you know, we we are feeling a bit too safe here. Right. <laughs> like you know, I got you know they obviously have the equipment and everything, but you know, I was like. Oh, I don't know about this. Like you know, you're a bit too safe about this. Like I don't know, and and I yeah. feel like that. Uh, it I, you you reminded me of another thing. I thought about it actually in that because people kept um I I've heard many jokes about being like, them being like oh, man I'm so surprised I didn't call it like a quieter place or like or a more quiet place and this sort of thing. It's like it's not. That's no. the thing. It's actually a louder movie. It is. <laughs> There's way more talking. Yep. And I think part of it, like unintentionally took a bit of the, the the sort of tenseness out of it for me like just a tad because there was more like speech and like noise like people were making more noise within it because the first one's so quiet yeah uh because they're really like treading on like eggshells like the sort of the whole thing um the, in the in the second one it, they think in sort of inherently for the plot there's more talking like 
out loud and there's like you know and that sort of thing that it like took a little bit of like it lessened some of the tenseness for me because it, it doesn't feel like you're waiting for something to snap at any moment as much mm. right and it, it's like again it's one of these things where it's like it's not this is not a like a huge criticism of it because the thing is so good mm. it's just something i noticed as i was watching it yeah where i was just sort of like hmm interesting especially after like literally just having seen the first one like comparing the two became like hard not to do yeah but it's also why i, I said i kind of want to see it again in sort of isolation so i can kind of just appreciate what it is doing it on its own because i think that that would be an entirely different sort of experience and maybe i probably have more appreciation for it mm. i like i liked how with the with the more that you know the more noise and everything it opened mm. up the world because you know I, I i think it was obviously very much intentional on krasinski's part yeah uh, to do this uh like emmett figured out that uh you know he he can be safe down there in the in the factory um and uh and that's why they could have like a few hush words and and i think those were needed very much so i yeah. li- i liked how his communication got better uh, uh, with the daughter in the end, I was like, so sweet. <laughs> oh, I just I like I, uh, my first like I I think I don't agree with not being as tense because I think it was even more tense in a way. Yeah, uh, I don't I don't know because um the Hollywood Reporter said the same thing in their interview in their review of it, and I was like, I don't think so. Uh, for me, it was like because I remember I watched the first one and I was like. <laughs> all the time because i was like okay i i can't even speak i can't even make any sound like it yeah. had that effect and i was it was it was very good on that part and in this one i think it because all uh, everything that happened came so quickly that it made it even more tense like you know like uh that she goes into that uh train wagon and uh she tries to get uh the, oh kid i was like like even my brother laughed at me. Thank you again, bro. Just thank you because I literally went because they they show her falling back, and and then you can see the monster kind of blurry. And I was like, oh <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, 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 because she it's, can't hear it. Like no. that's the main point in the whole yeah. thing. Like she can't hear it, and and she when she notices it, and you know she's alone, so she has to hold the gun and she has to hold the earpiece and then the microphone and everything i still think she did that very cack handedly i was sitting there going just put one thing down do one thing and then do the other thing (laughs) you'll be go get through so much quicker come on but how like oh don't get me wrong that scene was beautifully done because oh yeah if you're in that situation you you wouldn't be any smarter than her oh sure yeah but i I, it's just you know fully like third person hindsight where you're just like ah yeah you're being cack handed about this let me i was dying at that scene i was like no no, <laughs> the other scene I died at was uh, when Emma discovers uh, the ship, and he runs mm. back, and he's yeah. very loud, and I was like, "Stop screaming!" <laughs> but the thing is, I think at that certain point, it's like they're already on their way there, and it's already loud there. I may as well just yell. <laughs> but I was like, "Please don't!" And I was, I was so afraid that it's gonna snatch him. I was like, no, "Don't scream! Fucking stop it!" I was like, oh no. I was so tense. And I think it got way more tense because it was more people involved. Like in the first first one, I think you can kind of figure out that if if one of them dies, that says a lot. Like not the whole family is not gonna be, you know, dead by the end of this uh, first it's movie. So and- funny to me, because I feel like I find the opposite. I actually find it less tense when there's more people about. Because I'm like well, it's less likely that the people that I care about are going <laughs> yeah. to I mean, yeah, sure, obviously. But because, well, they, they I think it's it's because they did it so well. Like, mm. they usually come out of nowhere. Like, you, it's, it's like, like at the beginning, uh, I think what they did at the beginning, they, they perfectly translated it to the end when they appear on the island as well. The two scenes are like very similar uh intenseness 100 percent, and and it's it's beautifully edited as well and i'm like sound the edit itself and i'm like oh, oh this is just so good like i was scared shitless i was like nope i can't I've, i can't do this 
I very much appreciated the fact that the whole the whole scene on the docks it, again another Oof. spectacular sequence because yeah. it's like I don't I don't think you quite realize just how fucked everything is like mm-hmm. until like it like it slowly starts like they start kind of getting closer and closer because like she obviously puts the thing on it and you kind of sit there and go okay why doesn't nah. he just take it off and then it, it's it, it I think it takes a couple of seconds for you to realize that it's a sound trap yep. like it's covered in like loud things yep. that he can't move and it's like oh <laughs> oh no yep oh like... no <sighs> I was during this movie I was just scared for killing a Murphy that's I was like yeah I no. mean really it, it really, really that that last sequence uh in the oh. um uh in the sort of radio station in the transmission station where I was like I j- just uh, please don't let him die. No. I'm I'm not emotionally prepared for this. No, no, I wasn't either. I was like, no. Do if if do he this. dies, I'm like, I'm I'm dead as well. I can't. <laughs> Can we talk about the one bit in the movie where I was actually very annoyed with the uh, what's the name of the son? Marcus. Why the hell did he leave the basement? to go exploring it's like i understand that you're tense and you're looking waiting for your mother to return there was no reason for you to leave that bottom bit not at all and it fucked you (laughs) yeah i think it was for me that made sense because you know obviously uh his mom said that it's the stupidest decision that he he made in the entire fucking thing we also have to remember that he's a kid you know, yeah, and he was scared but shitless. Do you have to remember that I also had the criticism of the four-year-old in the first movie for taking the damn batteries? Like, come oh, yeah, on, I kid, remember, what is yeah, wrong with you? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I didn't mind that because you know, I he's scared. He left alone with with a baby. Is you know, he's he's a like. I think um, he did such a good job portraying that fear. Like, yeah, you know, and I love. I just it it just it it, it was one of those things where I'm like. Not only has you been told to stay down there, yeah. you're also injured. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you make the effort? I would have waited. Like, I don't think, personally, I just feel like he didn't wait long enough before he decided to venture out into the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I didn't <laughs> mind that. I'm not going to lie. I was like, yeah, yeah. But I, I think, you know, even when you're scared shitless, it's like, oh, is mom coming back <laughs> No, I want to check. Yeah, but it's it's that thing. I know, it's I, I, I can't. I can't. Like I'm just like, dude, you did this to yourself. You really, you really did yeah, this yeah, to yeah. yourself. Obviously, obviously, obviously. Although he couldn't have been prepared to no. finding a dead person. No, that that was like uh, I was worried. I was that whole that I will say that whole sequence. I was terrified we were about to find out that he was a bad guy. Yep. I was like, no, no. Yep. Yeah, I was. I, like I was him. afraid as well. I was like. Huh. Please don't make him the bad guy. <laughs> it's like I like him and I don't want him to be bad. Yeah. And it was like, oh, it literally is just confirming the story he told later. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, I'm good now. We're all fine. Yeah. 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 Same. Same. Same feelings. I was like, oh no. Uh, but yeah, I didn't mind that scene. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, he was stupid and it, it was a very stupid decision. But I was like, yeah, he's a kid. I can kind of. I can't let go of that sort of thing where I'm just like, come on. <laughs> I know, I know you can't because you blame a four-year-old for picking up batteries as well. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm... kids are Kid... stupid. Yeah, and he got sorry. killed. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I'm like, you, you I just if it... <sighs> like if, if my child had, to... I for one thing wouldn't have put the batteries anywhere where he could have taken them again. <laughs> yes, so the the adults or are stupid as well. Or just stick them in your fucking pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You might need them for a pair of, for a flashlight later. You yeah. don't know. Yeah, true. Batteries are a good, like a commodity. You should yeah. have hold, held on to them. True. All, all of it is true. I, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, but yeah, altogether, I. I mean, it's excellent. It's a great. I, baby. I think I, I am now considering watching it tomorrow again. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm in this place at the moment where I want to see it again, but also in the Heights just came out. You haven't watched and I have the to Heights go... yet. No, I haven't watched In the Height yet because I, I, mean, I, I so haven't good. had time, you know. Fair, um, fair, fair. And well, also, I want to go see it. I want to go sit down in, in in the lounge and see it properly. And, and... oh, fair. They're not going to bring it in the cinemas here, so I watched it on HBO Max. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's, it's out in my local cinema now, so I'm like, good. I want to go. I want to go. I want to go see it. Oh yeah, it. definitely. I love in the, the Heights. Big screen, yeah, the music is 
as always. Yeah, it's it's in the heights. It's great. It's, it's you know, it's so good. Uh, I I really liked it. Uh, there were a few things in there that I was like, eh, but uh, yeah, I, I've seen a few criticisms of how they changed it from the play yeah. or the, the the stage version, where I was like, hmm, interesting. Like the yeah, whole. Yeah, yeah. Um, slight spoilers real quick uh I've, I've had the decision to really sort of thin out nina and benny's story was kind of taken not too well by some yeah. people and i was yeah. like that is a shame but i did see that that champagne which is one of my favorite songs on the whole soundtrack oh, yeah, is yeah. on there and i'm like yeah, thank yeah. god it's yeah. such a good piece yeah. it is it is a good one it is a good one it was really good by the way i i i, I did like I will, that one as well I, i'm thinking i might i'm looking at my watch like it's got the date on it it does not um <laughs> I might go try and see it tomorrow or the day after because I think it's on the lounge go at some it. point that week. But I shall it. have to ask my mother if she wants <laughs> to come with me. Oh, there you go. Um, uh, and definitely watch Luca as well because, mm. my God, Pixar <laughs> just, it's just beautiful. That, like, I knew it was, it, it was coming out, but like, is it out in cinemas over here? It is. It should be. It's on Disney Plus as well. That's why I watched it. But yeah, but then you have to pay, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> You have to pay like 15 I'm not paying. <laughs> Fair, but I did. I I just wanted to watch it and I was like, yep. Yeah. It's really good. Uh, Very beautifully done. Gorgeous uh, animation. Obviously, it's Pixar. Uh, I love the story. I loved all the voice acting that uh, they did. It was beautiful. And I cried like a baby, yeah. uh, obviously. It's just, I'm surprised nothing's coming up when I'm like searching it. For the, like cinema release, I mean, because hmm. usually it gives me like, here's where you can go see it in your local cinema. But I'm like, it's not, it's not coming That's out. Interesting. Here. It should be out in the UK as well. As far as I, like I think it's on Disney Plus. I'm just like, because it's one of those things where like, I'd like to see it in the cinema, yeah. you know. Yeah. And if it's not going to come out in the cinema, I'll just wait for it to come out so I can just watch it with my subscription as opposed to buying it. <laughs> Fair. Fair deal. I wasn't patient enough, so I just watched it. It's really good. I've heard good things. I'm not surprised. I also say good things about it. <laughs> I'm one of them. Well, yeah, we, like I had good things from you, but I also had think good things from other people. Fair, 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 <laughs> fair, fair. I mean, it's it's amazing. Uh, and please go watch a Quiet Place Part Two. It's it's very good. I am so obsessed with it that that poster right there is the official poster for mm. for a Quiet. I got it because they love me at my local cinema. <laughs> They are my friends. So I was like, I, I don't, literally, I came out from the window. I was like, Do you have one? <laughs> Do you have one? I need it. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, bring it. Good. Done. It's like, you know, it's like a mafia situation. In there. <laughs> 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 no, it's not. I'm very nice. Awesome. I got tomato juice. <laughs> uh, I've been watching it. Like, and we've talked about this, and I haven't spoken about it. I watched all the Cowboy Bebop. Oh, in yes, a very short yeah. period of time. Yes, uh, yes. And then I watched the movie and I'm completely obsessed with it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I love it so much. Not surprised. Not surprised. It's very good. Can't believe it. Really uh, good. Are we gonna, soon going to get... Um, is it going to be live a TV show? Yep. Uh, yeah, yes. so it's a live action series that, yeah, yeah. Um, that so, Netflix are doing. Um, and the reason I watched it because it was because during Geek Week that they had very recently, mm -hmm. uh, my entire Twitter feed was screaming about John Krasinski's spike hair. And I was like... I could go watch this. Yeah. Um, and then I watched it in three days. Oh yeah, yeah no, I was surprised. It's it's a very good film. I really like Cowboy. Oh Boy. god, it's it's one of those. No, it's just so it's so good. Mm. But also there are like bits of it that I'm like, it, it's it's one of those things that also has such excellent dialogue that it keeps getting stuck in my head. Like yep. there are little bits and pieces that are like emotionally sort of moving that I love. But then there's also you remember the episode on the ship? Yeah. Uh, with the the strange black space monster yep <laughs> in my in my head i keep having ed's line uh because they go through the lessons mm -hmm. and it's it's the it's the bit where he, where she goes um uh, lesson lesson if you see a stranger follow him yes yes <laughs> <laughs> that's just in, in my all day since last night that has been in my head it on repeat it's just i'm not like... surprised <laughs> I'm not surprised. You even tweeted it out, so I was like, oh. I did. Yeah, yeah like, that's, there you go. It was like late last night. I was like, this is in my head and it's going in a tweet. Yes, there you go. <laughs> All righty. Um, I have a joke. Oh, no. <laughs> I've noticed I like you've, taken over our, you've taken over our Twitter account. To yes! I'm a joke bot now. Okay, okay. <clears throat> go on then. <laughs> what do you call a cute door? 
closed. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking of an acute angle. No, cute. cute. Yeah, no, but like I thought you were like I thought it was going to be a pun on like an angle that is acute, which is like ah yes, gotcha, gotcha, it's like gotcha, small. So yes. I was like closed. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> I like these jokes. Okay, they are good ones, adorable. and I am telling them really quickly, and I laugh at them, so it's good. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's still a pandemic, so take care of yourself. We're gonna yeah. lose Katie for two weeks. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have beautiful- that's a good point. Guest hosts, so guest host, guest. I'm unfortunately, I had work, so <laughs> which is fortunate for me because I'm getting paid for another yeah. couple. Of, I get I get nine days worth of, of pay, which is gonna nice. be nice. But um, you do get to lose me for a couple of weeks, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. Which means I actually get to watch the podcast for a couple of weeks, which would be nice. There you go. You I mean, I can it. obviously I could watch it no. regardless, but I yeah. don't because I don't need to watch myself because I was there. I always have to watch ourselves, right? But that's... well, you edit it, so that yeah, makes sense. It, it makes sense. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have uh, two wonderful guest hosts. I'm there excited to see what you talk about. Yes, I don't know yet, so don't ask. <laughs> we have not made any plans. No, I still have to come up with that. So, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be exciting and uh, fun. you guys get guest hosts. I have to miss two weeks of D and D. This, this, that's one of the sad things for me. Oh my God. <laughs> And you, you're not going to see me. That isn't that sad? I don't get to see you. No, I obviously that's sad. It's just, you know, we're at a really interesting bot in our D&D campaign. I'm like, I have to wait for like three weeks before I can play again. Oh, God, God damn it. Oh, God. See, that, there you go. There you go. You host the podcast together and it doesn't matter. You're not going to be missed. So I'm like, okay, fine. Fine. I'm just, okay. Lily, two things can exist at once. <laughs> <laughs> How many times? <laughs> <laughs> fine, it's fine, it's good. <laughs> I contain multitudes. <laughs> okay, fine, it's good. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're gonna be missed. Uh, you know, it's gonna be yeah, weird. That obviously, I'm, I'm gonna miss to doing this. <laughs> okay, uh, you could have been a bit more honest about it, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Let's go. Just leave now. <laughs> no. uh, this was fun. It was nice yes. to see your face again. Always. You 24 year old goddess over there. I'm 24. Uh, <laughs> and uh, take care, everyone. Be good. Watch your quiet place more too. Watch in the Heights and watch Luca. And you're going to have a good week. But also, you know, be careful. Yeah. Pandemic still. Get vaccinated if you can. If you're in the UK, it's for 23 and above now. So. Book your vaccines. There you go. And uh, subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Oh, yes. Please subscribe to us. And, and all that, you know, the liking and the, 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 the commenting and the sharing and all those things. Yes. We really appreciate it when yes. people do that. The, I, just put on the notifications, although we're always posting when a new episode is com- coming out. But, you know, yeah. you could be if you want If you want to keep up to date with what's going on, follow our Twitter account. Just two cinephiles. Yes. Lily does most of the tweeting, but I stop in every once in a while. Yes, I have wonderful jokes in there, so... <sighs> <laughs> Don't ask. <hust. laughs> <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, we love you all. Of course. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.